Welcome back to your breakfast show on GTV. And like I mentioned in the intro this morning, we have two key discussions for you. And the first one is going to center on bridging the gap between the able bodied and people with special needs. And you know, most people with special needs tend to be resentful about their disability and therefore become reserved from society. On the other hand, the able persons also find it hard to relate with them as they are nervous about how to approach them. So this morning, that is going to be the focus of our discussions. And my guests are already seated. To my immediate right, I have James Ai. He is from the University of Ghana, a student and also the president of students with special needs. And next to him is Michael Owusu, a motivational speaker, uh, also with uh, Breaking the Barriers. Gentlemen, welcome to The Breakfast Show. Thank you very much. I hope you had a good weekend. Let me start with you, James. Oh, yeah, the weekend uh, was wonderful, starting with the vast day on Friday. Wow. It was wonderful. <laughs> mm. And uh, Yeah, it was, like a, it was a good one, actually, um, as regards to what he said, being mm. a vows day weekend, so... Um, you really you know, had a good time. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> now let's let's look this whole let's put this whole uh, discussion into perspective. Yeah. You know, when you mention people with special needs or the physically challenged, exactly uh, what are we talking about? Let me start with you, Michael. All right. When you talk about people, um, persons with special needs, I I prefer we use the word persons than people. Okay. Because What's individual. the difference? I mean, persons, persons and people. Are individuals. So okay. people are, you know, so, so that we can address it directly. Okay. But persons with pe special needs are pe persons who require special assistance, especially in the education sector. And so they could be diverse. Okay. People, it could be mental illness, and it's basically related to medical um, terms, issues. So it could be um, autism, it could be mental um, impairments, it could be um, visual impairment, it could be um, physical challenges. So all these things make up persons with special needs. Mm. James, do you, do you agree with him? Yeah, I do agree with uh, what uh, my brother is saying. Mm. People used to refer to us as disabled mm -hmm. and uh, from what I have learned, nobody is uh, disabled. We are all able beings. Yeah. It's just that we need special attention. You know, you have years, I also, uh, somebody is also having years, but he's, he, his own can't hear. The only thing he might need is a, a hearing aid okay. that will assist him. So in and that terms, it. the person is a normal being like you, but he only needs some special care or special attention. Michael, you know, you are uh, uh, Physically challenged, challenged in, in a way. Uh, how was it like, you know, living with this challenge? Thank you, Em. It's very interesting <laughs> to think about it. But you see, when J what James mentioned, the use of the um, hearing aid as a gadget or an enhancement, and, and he went to say that everybody is abled in a way. <laughs> and But the one funny thing is that <laughs> all of us, one way or the other, we are challenged. We are challenged. And probably physically challenged. And challenges are in different ways. It could be obviously obvious ones, mm. and others are not so obvious. Definitely. So now I would use a crutches to walk, which is to help me walk. Now look at you. If you take your heels off and you <laughs> want to pull this, you might need to stand on this table it's for true. to reach it. Is that not a gadget helping you to reach <laughs> it? True. All of us are challenged one way or the other. Mm. But that is what we are trying to bring across to people. Mm. But going back to your question, in the early ages, I wasn't born this way. Okay. I was born normal as any other kid. Yeah. And so I suffered um, certain challenges which went, got me into that level. Yeah. But growing up with physical challenge in those days <laughs> wasn't easy because you go to play with kids, kids and they would just stop playing because wow. they, they, parents would tell them that, you know, don't play with this person because he might infect you with what he has, you know, but it all goes down to education and all that. And also the culture in which we all grew up, because back in the olden days, if anybody suffered a physical challenge or any form of impairment in his life, they would be put outside the village or outskirts of the town, you know, like set aside. And so I think those cultures and traditions have sort of played into but I think of late, it's getting better. What do you think? 
you know, there's so that much. awareness now. People are aware that you know, living with one kind, living with one kind of a challenge, it's it's normal, you know. I don't think it's so normal right now, because where I live, um, I've been there for a while, and every time I'm when I move there, anytime I'm going home. It's a flat. <laughs> so everybody in the flat will come out of their balconies to watch oh, you wow. and stare at you. Oh. <laughs> do, you do you get it? Let me bring uh, James into, into the discussion. Mm -hmm. You know, what are some of the causes of these e challenges that, uh, you know, some of us tend to, or people tend to, to get? The, co causes? Yes. Cause, the causes of uh, mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. being disabled. For that, uh, it comes from uh, various uh, background. You know, for some people, through birth, and I think with this one, the best people who can give us a proper explanation will be, be the medical, medical doctors. Expect. Yeah, they can. But of course, I know that. you've done a lot of research into it because once you are suffering from, from that, yeah, my my actually, let me use my own as an example. Okay. My started from infancy, and okay. uh, up till now, I can tell you, doctors have not been able to uh, know the cause of my. Uh, blindness, what happened before I went blind. Doctors have not been able to At what age was that? Oh, it started, uh, uh, let me say, two, three years. Yeah, it started very early. Yeah, and doctors have not been able to prove uh, what caused my uh, blindness. Mm -hmm. So, uh, although you, you were saying that it's, 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 you know, there's that awareness day in, day out about, you yeah. know, these disabilities, but yeah. people still uh, discriminate yeah, against you. Uh, James, how, how severe or widespread is it? You know, Ghana uh, uh, as a society, I don't know. I, I don't know, but whenever uh, some of these questions are being asked, then uh, I don't know the kind of answer I should, I should give. Because myself, uh, I went to Ghana Commercial Bank, the Legon branch of Ghana Commercial Bank. And this I will always say. People have <laughs> asked me not to say it. But on every, every platform that I would get, I would say this thing. A nice gentleman, after greeting him and everything, I said I want to redraw. He said, how much? I mentioned. Then he gave me the uh, redrawal booklet. He said, please, I have an eye problem. Can you write for me? I said, oh, but you blind man, you can't see. Then why do you <laughs> keep your money in a bank? Wow. Oh, that's and I said, you... That is in bad. the Ghana Commercial Bank telling me that? Something that you're being paid for to do. No, I mean, yeah. if I am getting this service in the nation's bank, then if I go to the private ones, what would they tell me? Mm. So does that mean if I can't see, then I shouldn't keep money in a bank? Recently, look at what happened when Professor Seydou Dana was appointed to be the Chieftaincy. Minister for Chieftaincy and Traditional Affairs. Mm. If we live in a society where disabled are accepted, can, can we hear some of these things that because of customs, uh, traditions. Uh, traditions, and all that, some chiefs can't get closer to people who are disabled? Then I, I could clearly say that then disabled should also not be under the care of any chief. <laughs> then we should live on our own. That is true, too strong, you know. <laughs> yeah, but then if, if I don't have to come closer to you, how do you then lead me mm. as my chief? If I can't get closer to you, how do you lead me? too bad. What do you want to um, add up? Yes. Um, and that's the why I come in as breaking the barrier. Mm. Now, I can't, we can't break the barrier if we hold one side of the bar. Mm. It will have to be two sides and break it. Definitely. Then we can break it. And that is why I say that um, both the able and the disabled, we need to. I would use myself as an example. When I was at the University of Ghana, I chose to be in Komoroto. Now, when I went to Komoroto, you know, the guys wanted to, I was, you remember there was a stadium disaster, that incident that happened at the stadium, during the stadium disaster. So, mm -hmm. please continue. So, during the stadium disaster, after the aftermath of the stadium disaster, I was just getting out of the hall and then I met a group of students sitting at the observatory, and they wanted to make fun of me, mm -hmm. you know. And they were like, oh, we heard you at a stadium. <laughs> How, is that true? And I said, oh, yeah, I was there. Even though I wasn't, I said, oh, yeah, I was there. Mm -hmm. 
you know, he that is down needs fear no fall. <laughs> I didn't have to worry about my leg, so I jumped. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at this point, let's take a quick break. And when All we right. come back, we'll continue with the discussion. We should move on. Oh, okay. Now, let's look at beyond, you know, that mental uh, trauma and all that. You went to the university. Yes. How did you manage? Yes, this, that's Looking what... Looking at the facilities that we have. Yes, that's what yeah. I'm trying to... I'm getting on there. Because I realized that I chose to go to Commonwealth. Mm. It has steps. Mm. I chose to go to Commonwealth. I wanted to be there. Mm. Now, when I got there, in my room, I realized that the guys in my room were fine. There was a bit of tension amongst the two of... Amongst us. Mm. They didn't know how to relate with me, the able guys. Mm. You know, and so anytime I got there, they would be a bit quiet and hesitant. Yeah. But then I had to break that sort of tension. Mm. So what did I do? One day a lady came to visit me, and when the lady had gone, the guys asked me that, how come you are the only guy that gets lady visitors <laughs> in this room? <laughs> and I said, oh, yeah, it's because of the way I walk. <laughs> you know, they, they couldn't believe that I could say that it's because of my leg, like, the way I walk. <laughs> Why, you know, and then they were all like, they started laughing. And then afterwards, I went to see the whole teacher because the room conditions wasn't good enough yeah. for us. So I wanted, he was changing others. So I wanted him to change me to, to a, diff, a better place. But when I went to see him, I told him my story. He just looked at me and said, my friend, if mm -hmm. you don't want this place, you can go to Ikwafu. That is where they have facilities for people like you. Mm -hmm. Now, that is derogatory. Mm -hmm. I could be offended. Yeah. I could be bitter within me. But I just chose to laugh it off. I went back to their room and told the boys that, hey, this man, the wicked man, <laughs> you know, we laughed it off. And that was the end of it. Yeah, and yeah. so because of that, I was able to stand for whole treasure position. And you got it? And I won by landslide. Oh. Because I had already won, I'd broken that thing. Oh, yeah. If I walk through Commodore, nobody sees me as a disabled. Hmm. Somebody came looking for me and said, he's looking for you know, in tree, they will say, a and I and yeah. <laughs> you know. And the guys were like, ah, who that? <laughs> you see you. So he's the me. Mentality. So when I got there, he was like, ah, this, this, is it? <laughs> Jew, this boy. <laughs> <laughs> the things he can do. <laughs> you understand? And so that is yeah. how you, first of all, you need some humor in you mm. to help you deal with so, these sort of things. If not, bitterness will make it very difficult to reach out. And then one thing I, you said, the able persons also want to reach out. But for the fear of saying the wrong things around you, like my roommates, for instance, they are really nice people, guys, but they didn't know how to reach out. Mm -hmm. But because I reached out first, it was so easy. Mm -hmm. When I contested for the hot treasure, it's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a time, when I contested for the hot treasure position, mm -hmm. I was asked the question that why should they vote for any of us? We were three, mm -hmm. we were five actually. And I was the only physically challenged person. The rest of them were all ADMI students. Mm -hmm. And so when I was doing sociology, and come out of all the treasure position goes to people in school of ADMI. Mm -hmm. So they asked, why should they vote for all of us? And then the, all the guys came. They said, oh, I'm the best student of school of ADMI. <laughs> I have ACCA. I have mm -hmm. that. When it got to my turn, I didn't have anything. <laughs> just that I'm a sociology student. So I looked and I said, well, I define what administration is. Mm -hmm. And after that, I said, the, the fans of Commonwealth Hall, you don't need ACC and ADMI to run it. Yeah. What you need is a trustworthy person. Mm -hmm. Now, if I should run away with the fans of this hall, <laughs> how far would I get before you catch me? <laughs> Strategic, you know. Do you understand? <laughs> Let me come to you, James. You know, someone has just given me this question to ask you that which of the G GCB branches that you went and you were treated that badly? I went to the Legon branch. I mentioned that earlier on. Mm -hmm. Legon branch of the Ghana Commercial Bank. Okay, so, you know, some have also argued that you people also tend to have some kind of inferiority complex. That is why you also can't, you know, want to reach out. Yeah, is it true? That, that depends on the individual. For myself, as my brother Michael started, if you get to campus now, my name, it's <laughs> all over campus. Mm -hmm. I have been part of the Electoral Commission of Legon Hall. And currently, as I speak to you, yeah. I'm a student volunteer at Radio Universe. And I don't mind what people say. And I'll, you know, this world, even people who say they are able, people talk about them. So how yes. much more you somebody who, who is having a problem? You know, people will definitely talk about you, but it's about how you manage it and how you control yourself. You know, individuals, people, 
depending on how their disability came about, when you try to say certain things about them, they go off and then sit down and think about it and stop whatever that they are doing. But some of us who started from childhood not seeing, when you say some of these things, it doesn't even hold us back because that is how we have been from time in memoria. So we don't care. But somebody at the SS level, I know people at the University of Ghana who had this problem at SS3. They were about writing Wasi and then they became blind all of a sudden. So such persons, when they are doing something and then you say something little, then they stop and they start crying. But some of us who have been in the system for that long, when you say it, we don't mind because the thing has been part and parcel of us. You know, I think at, at this point you have to take a sip because the weather is cold and the, so let me help you with it, James. Mm -hmm. This is Lipton. The show is sponsored by Lipton. Mm. This is good. And it says, inspiration flowing from nature. Michael, do you think we have adequate laws in this country that protect people or persons living with disability? Well, if you look at the um, persons with this, um, um, the act, mm. persons with special needs act, yeah. the disabled no, act. The disability act. The disability act that was passed. Um, it gives, it brings about the establishment of the National Council of Disabled, yeah. which has been established. And when one thing is that that council is um, governed by a board, and the board, the selection consists of people selected by the government. It's a constitutional mandate yeah. that the government appoints, selects people for that board. And the board's main objective is to um, propose and evolve um, policies and strategies um, for persons with special needs yeah. f to enter in, and also participate in national and mainstream development programs mm. and processes. Mm. And so this is one of the main things that they have to do. But the board is run, they have a tenure of office for three years, which yeah. runs every three years. But uh, apparently the current board um, term has expired. Mm. So a new board is yet to be formed. Do you understand? And so, but regardless of all this, there are other um, institutions like the F Federation of the um, is it Disabled, Disabled. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and also the, the Association for the Blind and other NGOs who are advocating and speaking. But the, unfortunate, the thing is, government only listens to a board, mm -hmm. the but, ma not, uh, but the not individual, because that is, okay. that is what is mandated to do. Mm -hmm. It's an obligation of government to listen. He's not obliged to listen to in just what the individuals are saying. Mm -hmm. So at this point, for me, I think these things are there. Mm -hmm. But as to whether it has been done or not, we won't be able to so say what that. So what are some of the issues that the individuals are raising? It is mostly accessibility and also with regard to job prospects. Okay. Because... Um, accessibility in terms of what? In terms of, let's say, when you enter any public institution. For instance, when I entered the GTV, um, mm -hmm. um, what do you call it? Um, studios. Studios. Yeah. You had a ramp, mm. you had a staircase, but you had made provision for a ramp as well. Mm. So should I had come in in a wheelchair or a mobility chair, I could have assessed it easily. Mm. Now I, I can walk to um, a, a bank or a commercial, um, any entity. bank uh, entity, you know, which is a public institution or whatever it is. And it, oh, the only access is a staircase. Mm. And so if I can't assess it by a staircase, <laughs> I'll have to be subjected to humiliation where I'll be carried. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? And the, and the worst part of it is even in the churches. That, you know, churches, when you put up banners, they say, bring your, your, your <laughs> sick mothers, your sick fathers, your grown-up, your... And when you are bringing them, this is not the day of Jesus <laughs> where they draw people from the skies, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you can't just build a church. Church is for everybody. Yeah. You know, and even more so for the people to come for, to be prayed for, to get miracles, mm. to walk again, okay? <laughs> and so you want them to be subject to humility. And they might even trip and fall on the staircase. Yeah. But what is a ramp? How long would it take to have a ramp alongside a staircase? These are the sort of things. And also lifts. Mm. Now you can access some, some of these high-rise buildings, mm. and it's unfortunately and there will be no lift access, just staircase. Mm. You know, and if I were to go through a, um, a long staircase to get I'll probably be sweating. Mm -hmm. And it would be nice on camera, wouldn't it? Mm, no. You know, so it makes, uh, these are the things, you know, and don't forget that challenges or disability can happen to anybody. 
It's true. And also we are growing. Old age can can give you some knee or joint pains and you can't assess this. You know, so we need to, these are the things we are looking at, mm -hmm. talking about the accessibility and also infrastructure. Okay. You know, and then when it comes to the job sector, sometimes you know people I, I think I'll let Jake take okay, that one. Take the job. <laughs> you know, when, when, for when, too long. when it comes to uh, <laughs> issue with employment job. yeah with employment you know i always like to uh, compare our situation to uh, people who call themselves uh, able <laughs> who claim who they are able i yeah, hope they, you are not better my brother i'm not i'm not but they claim but sometimes <laughs> you look at certain things they do and then you are like hey is this person who claims he is able yeah you know they 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 are can't have uh, they have this adage that when we go to a funeral mm. and they said nobody should cry, then not the one whose husband or whose wife is dead and their children. Mm. For them, they will never stop crying. Mm. If people who have proper legs, so-called proper legs and can walk, are not getting job, people who can see and do things very fast, mm. people who can listen yeah. when people are talking are not getting job, mm. then you talk of the blind. The physically challenged, the one in the wheelchair. Because the first thing that will come into the mind of the uh, person doing the, uh, the person employing them is that this blind man, if I employed him into my office or my uh, business, I have to get a second person, probably a guide, somebody who will be taking him around. But and then is that a situation? You like know, for instance, you are uh, physically challenged. challenged. You know, in Ghana, because of uh, technology, we are not all that advanced. So there are certain things uh, you can do. You might need an assistance of somebody before you do it. But then, you know, in the job market, they mostly consider some of these things. There's something that I need one person to do. When I get a disabled, I may need two people. But it's not always the case. Okay. Because, you know, as I'm sitting here on radio when I'm doing production, if it's three people that is supposed to produce, let's say, this is your breakfast show, if I'm part, you need four people. Why? We can be three because I can equally do every job that will be assigned to me. How do you see? It, I am partially blind. I am not uh, total. I'm okay. partially blind. Okay. So I can see to some extent. Mm -hmm. So that is what uh, is the challenge we are facing now. And then they should come up with something. Like say the number of uh, disabled that you will employ. I learned a that quota. 10 is there. That is it. Quota. So that uh, you are tax that will pay, there will be a reduction of something of that sort, something that the state will give to you. And then my brother was talking about accessibility. And now per the Disability Act by 2016, all buildings that uh, people uh, patronize, let's say banks and then hospitals, churches and all that, those public institutions, they should have uh, places that disabled, people in, in the wheelchair and people using crutches can get and easy access to. But up till now, we are in 2014, two years, mm -hmm. and it will be 2016. Yeah. But how much of this thing can we see? You go so to our churches. Propose? What do you propose? You know, what we have to do as a nation, it's not always that we have to sit down for people who are supposed to implement uh, policies to do that and then be also be enforcing it on us. Mm -hmm. It's also our responsibility as individuals, as yeah. citizens of this country, uh, to also take certain measures that will help our brothers and sisters okay, who are on that note let me go to michael you know trying to find a way forward or a solution to the problem uh, let's look at the individual living with a disability and then society what we can do and of course even our guardians and parents they are responsibility yeah. so let's start with you as the individual having that disability what are some of the things that you should do you know to uh, well, minimize the, yeah. that, that you face to, to start with i would want us to like you mentioned that the guardians and parents. I would like to stress more on parents and because when we get it right from the beginning, it will help us because my mom put a lot of confidence. What we need to do is to put a lot of confidence in people living with disability. You need to stress on making them feel confident about themselves. Yeah. Have confidence and self-esteem. That is what you need. Yeah. Do you understand? Mostly that is what you need because without confidence, and there's not only persons with disability, everybody. Mm. Now there are ladies, who have very lanky legs. <laughs> and because of that, they don't want to wear short skirts and things like that, you know. <laughs> and it, 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 yeah. it, it kills their self-esteem. And so they don't even want to go to public places yeah. to get it. 
but if we're able to first of all build the confidence of the children let them feel that regardless of your disability you are not disabled i was at the university of ghana i met a, a student who said to me that there's a disabled association on, on the campus mm. you have to come and join I looked him in his face and I said, oh, thank you very much. But <laughs> despite my challenges, I'm not disabled. Interesting. <laughs> he was angry. He was offended by what I said, okay? But I wasn't being cocky or boastful. Oh, yeah. But that's how you feel. That is how I feel. Mm. Now, look at me. I don't, I don't look at myself. I don't see myself as a disabled. It's only when I see myself in a video and I'm wobbly walking and then I think, well, <laughs> is that how I walk? <laughs> Do you understand? Mm -hmm. If we put that sort of confidence in people, in, like, in, in people mm -hmm. with living with disability or mm -hmm. people with challenges, yeah. now when they step out into society, mm -hmm. they will be able to blend. It's and also one, one thing we need to stress on is the school system. There should be integration. When you put them people with challenges in a special school, okay, I am not against it, but one, I, what I think is that when you put them in a special school, mm -hmm. now they are within themselves. Mm -hmm. They are with people who they think they are either better off than or they are worse off than. Mm -hmm. And so they find themselves and they are comfortable in that zone. Mm -hmm. And after that school, when they step out into the social, the big yeah. society, they find themselves, oh, I'm the only person this Living way. This. And so that grips them and they become redrawn. I did shock. It, yeah, shock, you see. I went through a mainstream school. So I was bullied. I was laughed at. You know, I, I went through all that when I was young. So when I came out, ah, I don't need any Yeah, yeah we have to go. But let me come to you, James. What yeah. would you want um, to let me, let me look at it from a policy level? Although we've, we've put it in place, some kind of policy. But is it enough to ensure that you people feel comfortable in our midst? Yeah. You know, mostly I don't... Uh, like speaking and talking about policies. Mm. It's about the mindset of the Ghanaian. Okay. The president can issue uh, any decree or whatever. <laughs> Supreme Court can come up with all sort of laws and mm. other things. But then if the Ghanaian, the yeah. individual Ghanaian, does not change the mind about disability, yeah. the there is nothing we can do. Perception. Okay. There is nothing we can do. So it's about we changing our mentality. A market woman seeing somebody who can't see, then the person is buying something. You are there to assist. But this woman, well, but if you know you can't see, why didn't you come with somebody? And by that, you are bringing the person down. It's not always that I have to get somebody from my house before I can move. If I step in town and you are around and I, can you look at this thing for me? Can you help me cross this road? You should be able to do that. We have to. But we the first to. thing, if you ask me, where is your white king? Why didn't you come with somebody? I will say bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that has been James Ayi from the University of Ghana, President of Students with Special Needs. James, thank you for being on the show. And next to him is Michael Owusu, Motivational Owusu Speaker. Asari. Owusu Asari. Thank you, Motivational Speaker. And uh, he's also with Breaking the Barrier. Barrier. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being on the breakfast show. And so definitely, you should feel comfortable when you have people living with one kind of a challenge or the other because they are all human beings and you don't know what can happen to you in the next one hour. I mean, it's, it's possible. Anything can happen. But next on the show, we bring you a feature on Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, his legacies on education. It's Monday, so definitely we're talking education. And that is our next feature for you.